ask that you bless them, anoint them, Lord, that the uh, presence of God might fall in this sanctuary, Lord. We thank, thank you for you, that. Lord. We thank you for that in advance. Uh, we pray, Lord, that you uh, put a hedge of protection around each person in this camp, that wherever they go, whether it be in the vehicle or walking, that, that you protect them and keep them safe from harm, Lord. We ask these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. A few announcements. Uh, I'm sure all of you by now have uh, filled out the registration form for us. Uh, that's very important to us. Also, on the uh, DVDs, uh, be sure and sign up for whatever DVDs you'd like to have. And, uh, yeah, come on in. We're just getting going. <laughs> got, a brand, got a brand new motor coach out there, and the alarm clock doesn't work. Uh, back to the DVD. Uh, we had uh, several ask about, well, what if, what if we want to just get all of them? Uh, if you want to get them, they're $3 a piece. So we've got a total of 18 sessions, which would be $54. And we've decided to let that package of 18 go if you want them all for $35. Now, if you've already signed up, for a DVD along the way, and you'd still like the whole package, we'll take that into account and mark the other one off, so you'll get one of everything. Um, talent night. Uh, we got some names down there now, and be sure we have all the names down by this afternoon. That's number one, so we can make the plan. Number two, uh, the sound people have asked us to see to it that those of you that have CDs that you want to sing with and perform with you get together with those sound people back there after 4 o'clock on Thursday afternoon, so everything is all squared away for Thursday night. Also, I want to uh, remind you again that Thursday night is the night we're taking up the special offering for our Windows Fund, for our Windows for Dorm D, so remember that. Uh, also remember that Thursday afternoon at 2 o'clock is our annual business meeting. And at that uh, business meeting, we'll be electing new officers for the camp. Uh, we'll be electing one trustee and the entire executive board. Um, you may have known that we were planning on pouring a little cement out, out here this afternoon. Uh, under the little canopy by Dorm B, and we had that all framed and ready to go. And late afternoon, it was decided for not very much more money, we could uh, just almost double the amount of cement. That was decided late afternoon, and the truck coming at 1 o'clock this afternoon, what are we going to do with this extra cement? And we've been talking for a long time that we would like to get cement in our machinery shed back there. And this morning, there's six or seven of the guys here was back there working, dragging everything out of the shed, leveling the ground, making up forms, getting ready for all that cement. And they're all here in the chapel here this morning. We got to give them a hand. I'm not going to mention their names because they don't want, they didn't do it for that. They did it for the camp, and they did it for the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what they did it for. We're about to get started, get going here. But I've got to tell you about this young woman teacher, obviously with liberal tendencies to her class of small children, that she is an atheist. She made that clear. She asked her class if they were atheists, too. And, you know, children sometimes, you know, wanting to go along with everything, not really knowing what atheism is. It must be good if she likes it. Wanting to be like their teacher, they raise their, all, their hands all up in the air. One, however, exception, a little girl named Lucy had not gone along with the crowd. And the teacher asked her why she decided to be different. She says, I'm not an atheist. Then asked the teacher, what are you? I'm a Christian. The teacher's a little perturbed now, her face a little bit red. She asked Lucy, why are you a Christian? 
Well, I was brought up knowing and loving Jesus. My mom is a Christian. My dad is a Christian. So I'm a Christian. Now the teacher's getting a little upset. That's no reason. She said loudly, if your mom was a moron and your dad was a moron, then what would you be? She said, Lucy says, then I guess I'd be an atheist. And uh, Mike and Lori are going to lead us in song service. I'm sorry, I got that wrong. Jennifer is leading us in a song service. Mike and Lori are doing a special music this morning. And uh, Billy and Jennifer have a commitment this morning, but they've agreed to join us this morning anyway, but they're not going to be able to stay for the whole service. So just one no ahead of time. They're not just sneaking out. <laughs> even though it will look very, very much like we're sneaking out. Good morning and praise the Lord. Yeah. This is the day that he has made. We will That's rejoice right. and on. be glad in it. Come on. Together we are known as Mercy Seat, but our sure. individual hearts are that of worship. Me personally, it is my favorite thing to do is to lead worship. We go out in campgrounds and camp meetings and we do concerts, but our heart, is worship and we just want to thank Jerry for the opportunity this morning to be the door openers and that is our prayer this morning that the presence of God would come into this building and it is up to us to expect that to reach for him to praise him to glorify him he is the one that gets all the glory and all the honor and all the praise amen We've been asked to do a little bit of contemporary worship. We're going to start with one from the hymnal this morning. It's page 107. We're going to be giving glory to his name. And we don't slow down. <laughs> no. We're doing verses 1, 2, and 4. So let's all stand together and give glory to God. Page 107. <laughs> Glory to his name, glory to his name, 
Father, we thank you for this opportunity to worship you this morning. Yes, we thank you, Lord, that we woke up in a country where we are free to worship you. And Lord, we ask that you would just sit back and enjoy our worship this morning as we sit at your feet, Lord, and we give you praise and honor. You are worthy, Lord. We hold nothing back from you this morning, Lord. We give you the glory because we are here to worship. The words to this song are so simple. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. And we do that this morning, <laughs> Lord, as we give you honor. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. You all got a piece of paper there. Tell him. 
here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. We give you the honor and the glory. You are worthy. You are worthy, Thank Lord. You, Thank you, Lord. We leave all our distractions outside this morning. And Lord, we just come to you in expectation, not of what you can do for us, but of how we can praise you and how we can honor you. We just want to give you our whole hearts. We love you, Jesus. Jesus, just the name of Jesus. Everything changes with the name of Jesus. Everything changes with that name. That name is sweet. That name feeds me. That name strengthens me. Say the name of Jesus this morning and let it strengthen you. Lord, we just come in into a new place this morning, into a deeper place with you, holding nothing back. We love you, Jesus.
Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are exalted. Praise you, Lord. David, I'm gonna pull the uh, I'm gonna pull the guitar out. set for Phil. <laughs> well, they're getting squared away. A few things. There's, uh, a lot of times we see interesting things in the, in the church bulletins. Um, sometimes the people that, that write them uh, uh, don't make it totally 100% clear what they're trying to say, but I've got a few examples here. Uh, the missionary lady's name is Martha Bilch from Africa will be speaking tonight at Calvary Memorial Church in Racine. Come tonight and hear Mel Martha Belch all the way from Africa. <laughs> Miss Charlene Mason sang, I will not pass this way again, giving obvious pleasure to the congregation. Ladies, don't forget the rummage sale. It's a chance to get rid of those things not worth keeping around the house, and don't forget your husbands. <laughs> the peacemaking meeting scheduled for today has been canceled due to conflict. <laughs> the rector will preach his farewell message, after which the choir will sing, break forth into joy. And this one said, don't let worry kill you. Let the church help. <laughs> We're going to have special music now with Mike and Lori. good to be with everyone at uh, camp this year. Uh, sorry we've uh, had to dodge in and out a little bit, but God's been keeping us really busy. really good to be back here. I don't know about anybody out there, but Lori and I came from a dark place. And it took quite a while for us to get into the light. And we did ministry at homeless shelters for 
about 14 years, I guess, something like that, 13 years. And we'd go back to people that we could relate with, the drug addict, the alcoholic. We've been delivered from drugs and alcohol, Lori for 16 years and me for 15 now, Praise through the Lord. grace of God. <laughs> but this, this has been our theme song because it, it really does tell our story. If you listen to the words, you've heard it many times. It's called, I Saw the Light. Well, I wandered so aimless, life filled with sin. I wouldn't let my dear Savior in. Then Jesus came like a stranger in the night. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. I saw the light. I saw the light, no more darkness, no more night. Now I'm so happy, no sorrow inside. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. Just like a blind man, I wandered alone. Worries and fears I claim for my own. Then like a blind man that God gave back his sight. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. I saw the light, I saw the light. No more darkness, no more night. Now I'm so happy, no sorrow inside. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. I was a fool to wander and stray, for straight is the gate and narrow the way. Now I have traded the wrong for the right. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. I saw the light, I saw the light. No more darkness, no more night. Now I'm so happy, no sorrow inside. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Um, I was in a contemporary worship band for... I close to a year. I never did learn how to play that kind of music, though. I love the worship that way, but I don't play it that way because I only do about three chords. <laughs> uh, I, uh, I've loved uh, Hank Williams' music most of my life. I never realized how much gospel he did until I became born again on June 11, 2000. Praise the Lord. This one... Uh, is, this is one that we use uh, in churches, actually, because it's called, Are You Walking and Are You Talking? It's not enough to talk the talk. Amen. We got to be able to get out there and walk the walk. That's right. And guess what? Lori and I are out there walking the walk. And that's the name of this song, Walking and Talking. On your journey to the grave, would you stop and try to save? Are you walking and a talking with the Lord? Would you lend a helping hand to some poor sinner man? Are you walking and a talking with the Lord? Are you walking? Are you walking? Are you talking? Are you talking? Are you walking in and talking with the Lord? Are you traveling in His light every day and every night? Are you walking in and talking with the Lord? If your heart said testify, would the world hear your reply? Are you walking in and talking with the Lord? Would you stand and shout His name? Or bow your head in shame. Are you walking and a talking with the Lord? Are you walking? Are you walking? Are you talking? Are you talking? Are you walking and a talking with the Lord? 
Are you traveling in his light every day and every night? Are you walking and talking with the Lord? When your time has come to go, will your robe be white as snow? Are you walking and talking with the Lord? Will he take you by the hand and lead you to the promised land? Are you walking and talking with the Lord? Are you walking? Are you walking? Are you talking? Are you talking? Are you walking and talking with the Lord? Are you traveling in his life every day and every night? Are you walking and talking with the Lord? Are you walking and talking with the Lord? Hallelujah. Thank you. We've had several people ask us this week if we were going to be giving our testimony. And we've been gone a lot this week, and we apologize for that. But, uh, you know, this is supposed to be a place where we come off the road, if, as you notice all them RVs over there. <laughs> <laughs> but Lori and I uh, met some Vietnamese pastors in Fort Worth, Texas a while back. And a couple of them live here in Orlando. And they've been keeping us busy since the day we got here, actually. And with their New Year's celebration, how many know that Monday of this week was the Chinese New Year? The Vietnamese normally celebrate that year, that New Year for a month and a half or two months in Vietnam. They start cleaning their house and painting the walls and everything. It's a big deal for them. It's their biggest holiday. And we got to be part of that here this year. And we were able to minister the word to a lot of Vietnamese, including a whole bunch of Vietnamese South Vietnamese military people in full dress uniform at one of the big get togethers in Orlando at the fairground. And uh, I was able to minister to them in their own language. Having been there in the 60s, my friend said, Mike, you went over to Vietnam in 67, 68, and 69 to kill. You went back to Vietnam in 98 when your wife of 26 years left you, you went back to die. Now, last year in March, we went back to live. Amen. You shall not die, but you shall live, Hallelujah. that you might proclaim the word of the Lord. And this year, in March, we're going back again. This time it's to proclaim and to deliver people from that darkness over there. Trust me, I know the darkness. I've been in the darkness of Buddhism and occultism and, and all the isms over there. So this song just came to us about uh, a few weeks ago. And uh, I don't do very well learning songs, but, but Lori and I uh, really like this song because it talks about, it gives a, it talks about a guy, a missionary. I believe he was in India. And uh, they were threatening to kill him and to kill his family. And uh, in fact, they did. And, uh, and he refused to compromise. It says in Revelations that we overcome him, being Satan, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. And I didn't notice the ending to that until just a few, when the, when the guy's on the beach. Then I noticed the ending of that scripture, even on to the death. Now, not everybody's willing to go there. We're going to be crossing into Cambodia next month. That's a very dark place for me personally. I was there in 98. This song is... Sorry, I'm getting emotion, a little emotional. Uh, we've been saturated with the Vietnamese since October of last year, really. And we're going over with uh, a group of Dave Reavers, Vietnamese missionaries. And, uh, and so we'll be surrounded with good godly men and women. So, this song is called, I Have Decided to Follow Jesus. Help us sing this, please.
I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Though none go with me, still I will follow. Though none go with me, still I will follow. Though none go with me, still I will follow. No turning back. No turning back. The cross before me, the world behind me. The cross before me, the world behind me. The cross before me, the world behind me. No turning back, no turning back. Will you decide now to follow Jesus? Will you decide now to follow Jesus? Will you decide now to follow Jesus? No turning back. No turning back. Thank you, Lord. It's such a privilege to be following Jesus. You know that? Such a privilege. God and bless and you. Mike and I have to leave in the morning because we have to get home and see our family before we get ready to go to Vietnam. But if you keep us in prayer, we'll be gone March 9th through the 22nd. We'd really appreciate it. Thank you. We love you all. What a wonderful work they're doing. And I can assure you folks that you definitely will be in our prayers. Not everybody can set their life aside and do that type of thing or even willing to. And it's tremendous. And I'm certain God will bless you every step of the way. We're about ready to have our speaker now. Kenneth Copeland voiced a little bit of a concern about what all we've got going on here today. He knows that we've got a cement truck coming into here this afternoon and guys are scrambling to get things ready and, and uh, he said, I, you know, I want to help with that too. And I said, well, don't worry about the length of the service for crying out loud. That's what we're here for. And that cement truck ain't going anywhere and uh, we'll be ready for him. So don't worry about it. But uh, this little story I have here has really nothing to do with that, but <clears throat> there was a terrible blizzard. It was snowing and snowing all weekend. Sunday morning came. The pastor saw that the snow had reached his window and didn't think anyone would be coming to church this morning, but he felt obligated to go anyway. The pastor fought his way through the icy wind and snow to get to get next door to the church. He waited in a sanctuary, reading for 10 minutes. He was about to go when the door opened and a man staggered through the door. Well, hello, said the pastor. Church will have to be canceled today. You're the only one who has come. The man replied, Reverend, if you had a big herd of sheep and only one came home that night to be fed, would you feed him? The pastor was amazed and cried, yes, I would. He then was filled with the Spirit and decided to preach his best sermon ever. He talked and talked about the pastor and, was, and all of, the, of life's trials and joys. 
He referred to passages from Genesis to Job, from Psalms to John, from Acts to Revelation. He did so with profound excitement and conviction. This went on for a long time. And after the minister had come to his final conclusion, he went down and talked to the man and said, I did that satisfy you, sir? He asked happily, and the man replied, Reverend, if you had a herd of sheep and only one came home that night to be fed, would you make sure that he ate the entire bale of hay? <laughs> now that's no reflection on your message. Like, Ken Copeland's going to speak to us now. It's on. Well, <laughs> so much for that introduction. I tell you. I appreciate all the singing. Listen, we've been blessed by that, huh? The singing, the Norton words we've heard this week, the preaching. I, I tell you, I love it. And I am honored that uh, Brother Jerry's allowed me to come and asked me to be here this morning. I, I appreciate that from the bottom of my heart. Now, uh, uh, concerning all those sneakers that's going to sneak out, <laughs> if, if you hear me talking real nice and just all politically correct and everything, and all of a sudden you hear my voice change and I get all mean and, hey, hey, you, you'll know the sneakers have snuck out. <laughs> now, I'm glad for the warning ahead of time. Otherwise, I'd be, I'd be like, now, this actually did happen. It might be like that. I was up in Erie, Pennsylvania one year preaching, and two men got up off the front and they're headed to the side door on that side and fixed to go out. And I'm yet, hey, don't leave yet. You, you need to get saved. Come back here and get saved before you leave. I actually done that. <laughs> no, and it wasn't because somebody was going to the bathroom or somebody that was a Christian and, and all that. Here's what was going on. They was too drunk. I'd already been disrupting the service. <laughs> So I knew ahead of time that something wasn't quite right. Now, they was acting up before that because somebody over in this area had a demon possession going on inside of them, jumping up while I'm trying to preach and mumbling all kind of weird stuff. And I, I knew nothing better. This old country boy from Alabama would just get right back down there and get in his face and said, I, I, <clears throat> I commend you in the name of Jesus. Come out. Leave him alone. Get out of here. You, we can't have none of that stuff. We ain't going to have that. Well, you, you don't you don't get up in the wrong face in the name of Jesus. Well, I mm, I tell you what, they they end up having some uh, bouncers, well the ushers that throwed him out. Well, now I'm trying to preach, and these two drunks that already called disruption b before this, and the pastor had to set them down. Matter of fact, he he had told one of them. He said, "You don't need to be coming here drinking uh, alcohol. I ain't drinking no alcohol or or whiskey." He said, "I ain't drinking no whiskey." And, well, you don't need to be drinking beer coming up in here like that. He said, I ain't been drinking no whiskey, beer, it's just wine. <laughs> <laughs> That's all it is. And so when, they, when I preach, they jump up, Brother Jerry. They, they headed out the side. Hypocrite, hypocrite. We ain't listening to this. Come to find out one of them had come because he lost a bet to the other one about coming to church. He lost a bet, so he showed up to church because he lost a bet, but they couldn't handle no more of that. So I, I'm giving the opportunity to, hey, don't leave just yet. You can get saved before you get on out of here. And, well, that didn't do much good. They left anyway with the help of them bouncers, ushers, helping them get on out. Somebody told me after church, said, you, when, you need to move your camper. You don't need to leave it here. They could be trouble. They could come back. And so I ain't worried about my camper. Them devils ain't coming back for no more of this. <laughs> they long gone. They ain't coming back messing with nothing. Oh, hallelujah. Turn with me, if you would, to the book of... Of Second Samuel chapter nine. Second Samuel chapter nine. Looking at verse number one. I'm gonna read a couple of verses and then we're going to chapter four of Second Samuel. Uh, but then we'll be coming back to chapter nine a little bit later on and dealing with that. Second Samuel chapter nine. And David said. Is there yet any that is left of the house of Saul 
that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake. And there was of the house of Saul a servant whose name was Ziba. And when they had called him unto David, the king said unto him, Art thou Ziba? And he said, Thy servant is he. And the king said, Is there not yet any of the house of Saul that I may show the kindness of God unto him? And Ziba said to the king, Jonathan hath yet his son which is lame on his feet. Before we go on with that, turn back with me to the book of 2 Samuel chapter 4 and we'll find out who this person is that he's talking about. In verse number 4, now, Keeping in mind, this is after King Saul, the first anointed king of Israel, is dead, been slain in battle. And Jonathan, his son, was also slain, who was a very close friend of David. They both were killed on the same day. And now, in verse number four of this, this is after the news had come that King Saul was dead, Jonathan's dead. And Jonathan... Saul's son had a son that was lame on his, of his feet. He was five years old when the tidings came of Saul and Jonathan out of Jezreel. And his nurse took him up and fled. And it came to pass, as she made haste to flee, that he fell and became lame. And his name was Mephibosheth. This is who this... Servant Zebul is referring to when King David, after all these years, is asking about, is there anybody left of the house of Saul and Jonathan that I can show some kindness to? Father, this morning we thank you for the privilege of being in your house. Lord, to hear what you have to say to your people. God, this morning I thank you for the anointing that'll flow like a river, that'll change those that need to be changed, that'll make a way where there seemeth to be no way, that brings deliverance, that brings healing, Oh, God, that brings peace of mind. We need you this morning, oh, God, that not a one of us leave the same way we came, but, oh, God, changed and rearranged in the name of Jesus. We give you glory and praise. Do your worthy name. Amen. I want to preach for a little while on the thought from that portion, lame from a former anointing. I said lame from a former anointing. I want you to notice a few things before we go back to chapter 9 in this chapter, that here was a man that was of the lineage of Saul that was in a place that had the anointing of God upon that household. I'm not concerned a word about what Saul done, how he backslid and messed up, but still the fact remains that there was a time that God had anointed that household, had anointed him king of Israel as the first established king of Israel. He's the one that God had placed his approval on. And here comes another person, his son Jonathan, but God had already withdrawn everything that he had to give to Saul and he's taken his thought and his place to another man named David, a man I his own heart and here's a man that has been raised up or a young boy here's a boy that's been raised up in that atmosphere I want to take a take just some thoughts and begin to reflect that on who we are where we are in the hour we're living in I said he's lame from a former anointing he came up under an anointed place anointed kingship but now something has taken place and I will tell you something it was not his fault the Bible tells us that when the news came that your dad and your granddaddy is dead and you got to go and hide before the rest of us are killed, that he, at five years old, was picked up by his nurse and she dropped him and it damaged his feet. He became lame. He became crippled. And it was not his fault. I won't talk to us for a little while this morning, church, that there's some folks around the country we're living in and their churches have been made lame from a former anointing and it was not their fault. I'm going to let that sink in. Here's an individual who was crippled, was hurt, and now he's in hiding for many years. It was a long time. We'll get into that just in a minute. But for many, many years, he's in hiding. He was of a place that had the anointing on it. He's been hurt. And now he's hiding from all of it. 
and it wasn't his fault. Can I just stop for a minute and digress and tell you, sometimes we have a child of God that has been hurt in churches. I ain't talking about the world out there. We expect to be hurt from the world. We expect them to put us down. We expect them to talk bad about us. We expect them to turn their backs on us. But when we get in the house of God and we get hurt for many reasons, sometimes it's not even your fault. Sometimes it's not even my fault. We've been hurt, been dropped in the house of God and it has not always been your fault or my fault. But we've gone into hide and we've covered it up and wounds have appeared. Our soul has wounds, has been scabbed over and we're in hiding and our mind has turned in another direction. See, let, 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 let me just take a, a look at what was going on prior to this. Let's read between the lines for just a little while. Brother Jerry done said that cement truck will wait on us. <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes they'll take off and leave. I've had it happen. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Here is Jonathan's son, Mephibosheth. From the day he was born, where he is, where he is.